Hello guys, welcome to another good video and in this video we're going to have another PowerPoint. Yeah, I know. Still no configuration yet. Um, we have to go over what Ike version one, what version 1 is and how Ike version 1 works. Um, and this is we are covering right now. Um, before I implement this IPsec, I need to make sure that I know how Ike version 1 works before I can implement it and how Ike version 2 works before I can implement it. So that's why I'm going over this. And you also need to know it if you go to Secure Communications Architectures. I mean, if you go over here, you're going to see that you're going to need to know ESP, AH, Ike version 1, and Ike version 2. So that's why it is good to know them because you, you still know it, need to know it for this certification. So let's go ahead and start with this nice PowerPoint that I put together for you guys. So Ike version one, internet key interface version one. And what is Ike version one? What Ike stands for internet key exchange. Um, there is two internet key exchange. There is Ike version one, I forgot to put the V1 here, or Ike version two is a protocol used to set up a security association, SA, in the IPsec protocol suite. Ike builds upon the Oakley protocol and ISACAMP I comes in two phases, so phase one and phase two, um, which we are going to also talk about them. So what is the scope of phase one? Well, phase one, the scope is it wants to negotiate a secure transmission channel between the VPN endpoints. And while they do this transmission, um, what they want to do is they want to um, share that secret key um, that comes from the different helmet exchange. And the, also from that uh, phase one, it comes some other additional keys um, from that phase one scope. Um, also, um, the scope of phase one is to secure parts of phase one negotiation, which we're going to talk about the parts, and you're going to see which one, which parts are um, secure. But the main reason why phase one um, actually happens is because you want to secure phase two negotiation. So let's go ahead and talk about phase one modes. Um, there is two modes in phase one. Um, so the first one is the main mode, which is the default mode, and the other one is the aggressive mode. So in the main mode, this is when you're usually going to implement a site to site VPN, you are going to use main mode, you're not going to use aggressive mode. And it has three bio-directional messages exchanges or six unidirectional um, messages. The first four messages um, are in clear text and the last two um, are going to be encrypted. And this last two, this last two messages that the main mode um, sense is to is the way that it is encrypted because um, you want to protect the identity of the endpoints. So that's why the last two packets are encrypted because you want to protect the identity of the endpoints, right? But in aggressive mode, in this is you are usually going to configure aggressive mode um, when you have a remote access VPN. When it's side to side, you're going to use main mode, which I put mode mode. He's, he has, I meant to say main mode. Um, so when you use main mode, you're going to be configured side to side VPN. In aggressive mode, you're usually going to do a remote access VPN. And this one only has three unidirectional messages. So it has three less than main mode. So it's a little bit faster um, than main mode. But since it is faster, it is not um, really secure because the last message is encrypted, but it's not mandatory. So a lot of people do not encrypt that last message. And the last message, what it does is it protects the identity of the endpoints if you encrypt it. If you do not encrypt that, um, anybody can see the identity of the endpoints, which is not really secure. In the phase one negotiation parameters, um, 
when you are negotiating during the phase one, what we negotiate are the following parameters. And the following parameters need to match, actually, which is authentication. So if you're going to use a pre-share key on one endpoint, on the other endpoint, you used to be using pre-share key. You, or you have to be using pre-share key. Otherwise, the phase one negotiation is not going to happen. And phase two is also is not going to happen. Also, if you're going to use an RSA, um, so if you are going to use an RSA SIG, you also have to do the same one on the other endpoint. Or if you're going to use the RSA ENCR on one endpoint, the other endpoint needs to have the same one configured. And then we have the encryption. If you're going to use DES, triple DES, or AES, um, you have to, they have to be matching. Um, for security reason, you are going to be better off by using AES, which is approved by the government. Um, also, the hashing needs to be matching if you're going to use MD5, SHA1, or SHA2. And the DFI home and group number also needs to match. If you're either going to use 1, 2, 5, 14, 15, 16, 17, or 18, it needs to match. What do, does not need to match, the parameters that do not need to match are the SA lifetime, which are in seconds. Um, they do not need to match. It is negotiated to the lowest value between the VPN peers. So you could have a lower value than the other endpoint or equal value. That's all you have to do. So if it doesn't match, it needs to be lower than the other endpoint. If it is higher, it's not going to work. And phase one is not going to be negotiated. Um, so for Ike phase two, what is the scope of phase two? Well, um, phase two is the scope of phase two is to negotiate the IPsec tunnel and also what to protect and how to protect it. That's that's the scope of phase two. And when upon successful negotiation, two additional keys are derived from phase one, key and material by default, unless you have configured PFS, which stands for perfect forward secrecy, if, po if purpose of forward secrecy is enabled, then there's more steps to that we need to that needs to happen. And we're going to talk about uh, PFS on another video. And these two keys that come from phase one are, are used to encrypt data through the IPsec tunnel. So remember that on phase on phase two, on phase one, you want to protect, um, what you want to do is protect uh, phase two uh, negotiation. And on phase two, you want to protect, um, you want to protect the IPsec tunnel and you want to also do how to protect that IP, um, phase two tunnel. And there's only one mode for IC version one on um, phase two. And the only one that you can run is quick mode and quick mode um, only has three unidirectional messages and they are secure through key and material of phase one. So here are the two, the phase two, Ike version one, phase two negotiation parameters. And these ones are the ones that need to match. So the first thing that need to match is what are you going to protect, which is also called the proxy ACL or the encryption domain. And how are you going to protect it? Using that transform set. And when you configure that transform set, um, you want to be matching the encapsulation protocol, protocol, either if you want to use ESP, which provides authentication, confidentiality, um, integrity, and also anti-replay. Or if you want to use um, the authentication header, and the AH does not perform encryption, so there is no confidentiality, but it does do um, data integrity, authentication, and anti-replay. It just does not encrypt the packet. And we're going to see a couple picture on how AH and ESPS um, work together, or how they work separately, and also how they work together. For a better um, encapsulation protocol, you want to use a you want to use both of them together. And I'm also going to show you a picture of how both of them work together. And another parameter that needs to match for phase two is either Null, where you don't have no encryption, 
test, triple test, AES, AES, GCM, AES with GMC, GMAC, the hashing, MD5, SHA1 or SHA2, and the tunnel mode, which is tunnel or transport mode with or without the UDP. So when you're using the tunnel mode, what happens is uh, we encrypt the entire packet and we just insert a new IP header to that packet. But for transfer mode, the um, what happens is we do not encrypt the entire packet and the source and destination is none. That's the difference between tunnel and transport mode. And they need to match on both endpoints. Either if you're gonna use tunnel or transport mode, both ends needs to be matching. And these are the parameters that do not need to match, like on phase one. Um, the security association lifetime in seconds and traffic volume do not need to match. Well, actually, traffic volume does not, you do not configure that for um, phase one, only the lifetime. So the lowest values are negotiated. So it needs to be the, the lifetime needs to be either lower or equal to the other endpoint. It cannot be higher, otherwise it's not going to work. Um, so n highest values needs to initiate the point that needs to initiate the tunnel. So this is how it, wor it works. If we have the, if let's say the uh, the seconds on tunnel one or on the endpoint one is like 800, and on the other endpoint is 400, then the other one, the one that is 800, needs to um, initiate the tunnel because if the 400 initiates the tunnel and the other one is higher, then it's not going to work. So here's the um, control plane. So how um, Ike first one and the control plane protection works. Um, for phase one, um, it always starts on UDP port number 500, but if NAT device is detected, NAT transparent is going to be negotiated and then it's going to be changed over to, to UDP 4500. So when NAT T it's um, it's negotiated then we are going to switch to this port but if we don't see if we don't have any NAT translations then we are going to keep using um, UDP port 500 that's for phase one for phase two on um, the IPsec control plane um, it follows up on phase one so if phase one is using port 500 as you can see right here if phase one finish on UDP port 500 then phase two um, IPsec control plane it's going to be using port 500, but if phase one finish on UDP port 4500, um, then this phase two control plane is going to be using um, the port 4500. You know the, how we protect the data plane, and this is for phase two only, phase one does not do this. Um, so if phase two ends up on UDP 500, then we are going to be using either ESP or AH for encapsulation. And, optional, and optionally, you can use both AH and ESP together because one of them provides ESP, it provides encryption for the entire packet, and AH pro provides authentication for the entire packet. And since I'm going to show you a picture that ESP, when we are doing ESP, it encrypts the entire packet, either, even the, um, the original. IP header encrypts that, and what it does is it inserts another um, IP header of the endpoints. But that IP header is not authenticated, and that's why you want to use AH for authentication so we can authenticate that IP header. And if phase two ends up using UDP 4500, then you want to use ESP inside the UDP 4500 encapsulation because the authentication header is not NAT friendly. Um, because he authenticates the IP header. And since we are going to be changing that IP header with NAT translation, then you don't want to be using that AH. And as you can see at the bottom, AH authenticates the IP header, but ESP does not, which is why you will choose AH and ESP together when you are not using NAT. And here is the authentication header. And a lot of people do not know what that means. Well, the authentication header protocol provides data origin authentication, data integrity, and replay protection. And like I said, does not provide encryption. However, a, like, like I said, um, AH does not provide data confidentiality, which is encryption, 
which means that all of your data is sent in clear text hashing. And the way that it works is it does a hashing algorithm and then it adds a pre-share key and that's going to be equal to the authentication header. It just using a hashing algorithm and the five share one or share two and then a pre-share key. Okay, and this is how it actually works. So here's the original IP packet. As you can see right here, the IP header and TCP header and the data are right here. But when you are using the AH or authentication header in transfer mode, what happens is the um, we are inserting an AH header right here between the TCP header and the IP header, and we are going to authenticate the entire packet all the way from the IP header to the data. But when we are using ESP encryption, this is what happens. Um, this is for the ESP trans transport mode packet. And as you can see right here, this is the original packet. And what happens is that we insert an ESP header between the IP header and the TCP um, header. We insert that right here, the ESP header. And then at the end of the data, we insert an ESP trailer. And then we do the ESP authentication. But as you can see, we are only going to be encrypting the TCP packets and also the data, right? And we are only going to authenticate from the ESP header to the ESP trailer. But as you can see, we are leaving the um, the IP, the original IP. It's known by everybody. So anybody can sniff it and see the original um, IP address, destination, destination IP address and source IP address. But when we use an ESP tunnel mode, what you can see right here is that we insert the ESP header in front of the original IP. Instead of being in front of the ESP header, when using transport mode, we actually insert the ESP header in front of the original IP. As you can see right here, this is for ESP tunnel mode packet. And then we insert a new IP header. And I believe this IP header this is the original, not the original, but the endpoints, source and destination IP address. And it's not being authenticated. The only thing that is being authenticated is the ESP header all the way to the ESP trailer, which has the IP, TCP, and data in it. And that's why you want to be using AH with ESP, because this is what happens when you use both of them together. So what happens is you see the original right here. So in transport, in, when we do in the transport mode, um, what happens is that we are going to um, authenticate the entire um, IP header all the way to the application data. And then that's going to be, um, well, as you can see right here, this one is only, this one right here is only for the AH, AH, and as you can see, it is authenticating the entire packet. And this one over here, it is for the ESP by itself. This one is ESP by itself. And this one is the authentication header by itself. But when we combine both of them together, this is what we get. So now, um, as you can see right here, we actually authenticate the entire um, packet inside the new IP header that we insert when we use ESP. And as you can see right here as well, even though right here only the authentication and encryption is from ESP all the way to the ESP trailer, all the way to the ESP header, all the way to the ESP trailer. But over here, when we use the authentication header, we actually authenticate the new IP header. And over here, we do not do it. That's why you want to use a combination of both AH and ESP. And this is it for this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope I did not confuse you guys. Um, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and leave any questions on this video below. And if you guys have a Twitter account, why don't you just go ahead and follow me on Twitter um, at CCNA Daily Tips. Um, thank you guys for watching. God bless you. And I'll see you in the next one, guys. Bye-bye.